very warm welcome to today's uh, opening bell. This is your Front Africa report. Let's get uh, the show uh, started with the markets. As always, just a very quick review. Dango Testament shares climbed roughly 10% on Wednesday to lift the Nigerian market, the Osha index, back to that psychological level of 50,000 reading. We saw a few uh, other names in the green, the banking sector, insurance, industrial goods, consumer goods, oil and gas finished in, in the green. A very big jump since the start of the week for the NGX. In uh, Côte d'Ivoire, the, the, the composite index fell by 0.44%, just a bit of a smaller size of 0.03% on the Egyptian 30 index below the 10,000 uh, level weight finished off last Thursday. And the Nairobi market came back strong 1.43%. Yesterday, the morning after the presidential uh, elections, uh, no clear winner has been declared yet. Everyone sitting on the edge of the chair waiting who succeeds President Uhuru Kenyatta. And the South African market down three quarters of a percent, 69,700. The GSC OSHA index fell below the 70,000 level where it crossed uh, two sessions uh, earlier. So put that aside, and of course, the big elections in, in Kenya is the biggest story that everyone uh, in Kenya, in East Africa, and around the world is keeping an eye on right now. Who succeeds President Uhuru Kenyatta and what legacies have been left behind? All of this will have a whole lot in, in, at play for the currencies, the uh, for the currency, which is the uh, Kenya shilling against the U.S. dollar. Analysts are predicting a bit of a uh, softener uh, for the uh, shillings moving uh, forward. The merge exchange on the island of Seychelles says he's welcoming on board the trading platform Tesla. Uh, that's one big news and says others are coming, such as Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, and Google. It's a very big jump for this uh, exchange, which is uh, a, a kind of a special derivatives exchange uh, on that uh, island east coast of uh, Kenya. And Djibouti's uh, Salam African Bank has uh, acquired the top finance bank of Uganda in a deal that has been approved by the regulatory authorities. And top banks in East Africa are scrambling for a piece of the new bride. DR Congo, where Equity Bank Group and a few other big names are already taking the front seat. And the Central Bank of Kenya is warning that there's going to be a supplier loan default spike after the general election. The elections were done on Tuesday. We'll see how uh, Kenya will move forward post-elections in the days and weeks ahead and the announcement of a clear winner, of a winner in the presidential election. So keep an eye on that uh, as well for you here on the on Fort Africa Reports. Let's get on to Nigeria, a very brutal report released yesterday by the World Bank, the Nigeria's uh, uh, economy is on what you call facing an existential threat, according to the World Bank report entitled Emerging Nigeria. The new report says the multi-trillion fuel subsidy is posing a very serious downside risk to the country's economic uh, survival and fiscal balance. That's the biggest economic news that everyone is talking about came out yesterday evening. And the results out of Central Bank's uh, uh, Treasury auction for this week, the regulator sold three rollover, three dated papers. Uh, the uh, stop rates or the yield on those uh, three instruments went up as the announcement came in late in the evening. And uh, Mali has, uh, has exited the UMO market after raising about 277 billion CFA franc to repay part of the debts being accumulated and the economic and financial hamstrung that the military junta uh, faces. Again, uh, the uh, ECO has lifted those economic and um, banking financial transactions uh, uh, sanctions just about a month ago, but there's still a whole lot of debt on the books of the authorities in Bamako. And Cote d'Ivoire is uh, paying subsidies north of 500 billion CFA francs. That's according to the latest uh, reports. First subsidies in one of West Africa's largest economy is now about half a trillion CFA franc. And Ghana inflation came in yesterday roaring 31.7%. The figure in June was around 26%. That crossed 31.7, headed to 32%, one of the strongest in West Africa, among the leading economies, as it were. In the meantime, the Bank of Ghana, which is the central bank, says it's buying gold from local miners 
but it's paying for them in cities and not in U.S. dollars or any other currencies. The whole idea is to prevent inflation, step up the value of the city, and help uh, the country balance its books. Uh, Ghana is looking at a further facility uh, funding from the International Monetary Fund. That's still being contested anyway. So let's uh, move on to... So that Africa news coming through this morning is about MTN releasing its earnings for the first half of the year. The MTN Group uh, reporting a very robust earnings today, and that is one part of the news that everyone is talking about. NetBank is also talking about the number of branches it operates in, in, in southern in South Africa and how it's going to restructure those branch operations. So keep an eye for those uh, earnings uh, from uh, uh, MTN Group and of course those corporate news from uh, uh, NetBank as well. Therefore, in Zimbabwe, the country is looking to anchor its economic growth for this year on the back of uh, mining activities. While Zimbabwe and Zambia has entered uh, uh, an, an agreement to establish what you call the Joint Agro-Industrial Pack. The whole idea is to leverage uh, the, the strengths and the opportunities of both countries uh, to promote agro-allied uh, industrialization, and that is one uh, thumbs up for for those uh, for this uh, that relationship. As industrial gas users in South Africa says the price hike by Sasso, the energy giant, will not bode well for the industries. Today, we're expecting South Africa's mining and manufacturing data to be released later in the days. We will we, we have those numbers for you uh, later <clears throat> on Frontier Opening Bell. And the business confidence index in South Africa came slightly higher. 110.3 in the month of July. So let's sum it up in <clears throat> North Africa. Uh, and we have, of course, a bit of a, a coverage from Morocco and uh, Egypt, with uh, Egypt looking at factory for railway cars in a relationship with, this, uh, with the Spanish Talgo. <clears throat> Egypt is looking to set up a factory that will help it to manufacture railway cars in the North African economy, Morocco's agri sector added value to drop by 14% this year, while the Bank Central Popular launches a new banking service for those who are 12 to 17 years old. That's your Frontier Open Bell today. I'll see you next time.